Greetings, children of God. My name is Helen Wangoinatu. Always delighted to come to your screens uh, with this show, with these great conversations that we have here on this platform of Deborah Generation Show. I pray and I hope and I trust that God has been walking with you, journeying with you, and dealing with the issues of your heart in the different lessons and conversations that we have had. I am praying and hoping and believing that you have been encouraged, you have been inspired, you have been uh, just called out to become that which God has called you to be. And none other is my companion than Mama, my great Mama, that is Pastor Miriam. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. And uh, last time we started on a series and we were looking at uh, Sarah mm -hmm. or Sarai. We mm. looked at Sarai before the name was changed. Mm -hmm. And we looked at her journey. We looked at her, her introduction, which she, she was introduced to us with her circumstance or with that which defined her at that point. And that uh, was the lack of having a child. And therefore, Sarai was introduced to us like the wife uh, to Abraham, uh, Sarai, mm -hmm. the barren mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And we saw how uh, we related to it in our day-to-day -day life as women, that sometimes you find you are identified or you are marked by your situations. Your, identi your identity is stolen away by your life circumstances or your pain or your shame. And we said that uh, as long as God has given you his word and God is not a man that he should lie and therefore you should not be put down by that you should not allow your identity to be stolen by that situation, by that circumstance, that you should hold on to God because God will come through to perfect that which she has spoken in your life. And uh, just continuing from where we stopped last uh, time, uh, today we would want to, to see the journey, we, we, we go on with the journey of Sarah and see uh, what she did while she was waiting. Because remember, God had given his promise to, to, to Sarah. And he specifically said that they were going, Abraham was going to have a son by Sarah. Although while in waiting, we see the desperation in Sarah and trying to help God by, by asking the husband, eh, is, we are the clock, we are beyond the clock. And uh, why not uh, uh, find another way that we can, we, can, we can have this promise come to pass by either uh, engaging our servant, that is Hagar. And I just want to pose a, a question. Have you ever found yourself in that space of waiting on the Lord, wondering what next? You're in a situation which seems to be nothing is moving. Uh, you know, uh, nothing is even suggestively trying to tremble as if things mm. are moving in the, in the direction. And you are confused. You're wondering, is, still, is God still at work in this situation? Uh, uh, did God, you start even questioning, uh, did God say, this about my life has God spoken this about how, why is my why is it why does it look different? But uh, what what encourages me in the word of God is the word that I have just shared that He is not a man that He should lie, and that which has the word that has come out of His mouth He follows through to perform it. He is a faithful God. And sometimes his ways are not our ways. And therefore we are caught up in that uh, quagmire of not understanding what is really happening in my life, 
because you expect things to be moving this way, but God is working them out in a different way, which you cannot perceive. So uh, today, I just wanted to look into what are the do's and the don'ts while we are waiting on the Lord, Mama. Please help us dissect this. Wow, <laughs> do's and don'ts. <laughs> Rules, yeah. the yeah. rules of the game of, the of, of the game game as ways. one waits. Yes. Well, the story of Sarai mm. is a good one. The do's and the don'ts. This one has real mix-ups because you see there are some things that are not in the control of the, the woman. Because mm. like when she's told, let's go she follows. She's mm. told, let's go to Egypt, she's gone. Mm. When she's told, we are going to give you in like um, like uh, the shield or the sacrifice for my life, mm. she's there. Yes. When she's told, God said that we shall have a promised child, mm. she's, she's, she's there waiting. Mm. And um, one of the do's, as we all know, is as we wait, we wait patiently. Mm. And uh, it's being patient is as being patient. Sometimes it can just overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. You can really count the many days you have been told, keep waiting, he is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, the pressures around you are building. Mm -hmm. In fact, the biggest deal is dealing with the community, dealing with the atmosphere, dealing with the environment, dealing with the neighbors, dealing with family, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with your employees, dealing with your boss on these matters is what matters a lot. We are constantly under that pressure, pressure from all yeah. corners. Mm -hmm. Yes, from all corners. Mm -hmm. Like um, I'm thinking of a situation where you are in this, like the infertility issue, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to keep consulting mm -hmm. a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, at work, you have to keep asking to be allowed not to come to work mm -hmm. sometime. Mm -hmm. And that can bring pressure yes. when the employer is saying, you're wasting your time here, mm -hmm. you're wasting our resources, mm -hmm. and that can be demoralizing. True. When you have to ask someone to sit in for you, like mm -hmm. a colleague, and mm -hmm. you, you're saying you'll sit in for them another day, mm -hmm. and they have their programs, you mm -hmm. see it can be a real thing. Mm -hmm. There are those in-laws who keep saying, when will I be born? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, among the Kenya region, they are very good at that. <laughs> they are very good at asking you, when will you ever oh, be a me? Yes. It's like they are not living. They need someone mm -hmm. to resurrect them. Mm -hmm. Or they have not been born and they are eight years and they are asking, when will I be born? Mm -hmm. It's like a rebirth they are still waiting for. True. And uh, if Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, they would be there clapping <laughs> their hands and saying, somebody should go back to yes, the mother's to stomach the mother's and be home. born. Oh, yes, brother, yes. and be born again, mm -hmm. you know? And that can really be a lot of pressure. You mm -hmm. know, we are just told of Sarai was barren mm -hmm. and not given a child mm -hmm. to, to, his, to her husband. Mm -hmm. And so Sarai comes and says to, 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 the, to the husband that please have my housemaid or my, my servant and let's have a surrogate issue sorted out and I, I i i feel like at that point mm -hmm. sarah my maybe was having conversation in her head and said hey this god is taking too long yeah can't he see that i am 90 i'm here i'm going to 90. well you know what the bible says like in hebrews 11 about her having a mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. she had been past the age the age of child so baby. scientifically speaking or biologically speaking it is a disqualification even when god is saying you shall have a baby mm -hmm. for a woman there are those we know of course there are those calendars mm -hmm. there are those cycles that determine when children can be made True. yeah and then apart from the cycles there is something we call menopause yes a menopause mm. and i pronounce it like men oppose you know <laughs> like uh, you oppose men yeah, yeah. and then it's like uh, scientifically biologically the way a woman is mold, molded or modeled 
there is that place where main issues start becoming a, diff- mm. a difficult thing mm. to come by. Mm. And so when God is telling her, you'll have a child, mm. oh, community is asking her, oh. did you visit Dr. Johnson? <laughs> have you seen Dr. Nahol? Mm. Have you seen the other one? Mm. What did the prophet tell you? Yes. Did he pray over you? Did you take that sacrifice? What did God say after that? Mm. And you can see, it's always like pressure is 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 building, mm. and um, I know it has been building for somebody. Mm. Leave alone the Sarai of the Bible. Yes, we have so many of them around us mm. whose pressure we know is going clicking two hundred of I don't know how much, and it's because one community doesn't have mercy. Yes, the the orientation of the community we are in is so selfish, mm. so self oriented mm. that it's like we do not care about others feelings we always want to seek to know what is this that can is not it, it, what is this that makes you not get to this yes. or achieve like mm. any other person mm. and so it's the do, the do's of of this issue is look unto god mm. focus on what god said it mm. is difficult the word of God is hard to come by. Yes. Even when it is spoken a hundred times, yes. it is hard to come by mm-hmm. until we see the fruition of what is, is said. Yes. But I want to remind someone that faith comes by hearing mm. and hearing by the word of God. Mm. The other thing is, if you really want to defeat the devil and all his allies, mm. you must know it is written. Like Jesus would tell the devil when he came to tempt him, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Mm. It is written that you shall not test the Lord your God. Mm. It is written that you shall not worship any other thing apart from God. Mm. And so it is so. We have to be reminded that God sends his word and he follows it to accomplish it. Mm. We must the do is listen to God. L- keep reminding yourself, what did he say? Mm. Even though it tarries, it will still come to pass. However long, a hundred years or 90 years, mm. when God has said it, he is not a man that he should lie. Mm. He should not even swallow his word like the children mm. of Adam do. Mm. We will always tell you, oh, did I say that? Mm. Did I really mean that? Mm. Please let's check the meaning of that word in the dictionary. Mm. When I said I'll be coming, it could mean this or it could mean the other. Mm. And so that is one of the things. Mm. Look unto God. Look unto God. Keep yourself in prayer. Mm. Then ask again and again, what did he say? Mm. Seek to know the word of God mm. for us. Mm. Then ensure you are encycled or surrounded by people who believe in what you had, mm. who can believe like you. Mm. Do not get into the camp of those who who do not believe what you do not mm. you, you do not mm. because we will find that uh, like minds will go the same direction mm. but if you find that someone is always trying to ask you but did god say is he really going to do mm. it's good to close doors mm. of them mm. i close them out mm. for that season mm. let them see god do yeah. and let them come and say wow oh he was able to do and you tell them he's always able to do. Mm. So we must always look around our environment mm. to see who is going the same direction mm. with us, mm. who can help us fight against the weed that so strongly blows. Yes. You know, and especially the issue of barrenness has been taken to be a big deal, mm. a big deal mm. by the society. Mm. And that's why now we have so many things that are happening. Mm. And the main one is surrogacy, mm. as we have mentioned earlier, mm. that someone is still trying to work out mm. if a woman can't handle a pregnancy, mm. they have to look for a surrogate mother yes. and then have a baby, maybe through the man. Mm. Whatever they are doing in the labs maybe mm. is different yeah. from what we see Sarah is saying. Mm-hmm. Because Sarah is saying to Abraham, I have had been the Lord has restrained me from having a baby. baby. That's what she said. Mm. The Lord has restrained me mm. from bearing or having a baby. Mm. And so advised the husband, please take Hagar. 
let's have a child. And you remember what we said last time, maybe in their small conversations, they would look and see who, someone who was the who among the servants. Mm. Or maybe even, candidates. you know, Abraham was a man of concubines also. <laughs> you cannot really know yeah, if he was looking and yeah. saying, when will this meat ever be put on the table? <laughs> you know, there are so many things that normally happen in uh, families. Uh, yeah, so it's like uh, he was there waiting and the saliva was already flowing. Mm. And he really didn't also look at, up into the word God had given him, the promise. And so, as much as the Lord speaks, please get custodians, get custodians, get managers, like I call them, uh, there's a destiny help us. Mm -hmm. You also need a not accountability, Mm. Be accountable to man partners. partners or mm. managers. Mm. Like manager, it's that one who is above you, mm. who tells you, you can't go this way. Yes. So get yourself some accountability, partners, accountability, mm. managers. There are those who are at the same level with you. Mm. There are those who are above you, who are able to read your signs and tell you, hey, Miriam, please, although I'm older than you, I think we did it this way. And there are those who are walking the same path with you. Mm. Remember, like, um, like uh, if, if you can have a club around yourself, and, but based on the word of God, get people who are like-minded. That is what we said. Mm. So we call them partners. Like you're moving the same direction. Mm. But also get yourself a manager or a supervisor mm. who is above you who can help you. They may have gone through that same journey before mm -hmm. and the Lord showed them through. Mm -hmm. So that is a do as you wait. Mm -hmm. And always keep off every distraction. Keep off every distraction. Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord to give you new grace every day. Mm -hmm. Like help you to go through whatever. Whatever they have yeah. said. Yes. Because some many, many, many a times you find that what comes from people, the mm. spoken word, mm. eh, it can it really can mess you build or, or messes you. Yes. And so what you hear has power to make you. I feel like uh, the counsel of men sometimes mm. can, can, be, can deviate you from the, the way and the will of God upon your life, especially when you know you have sought God on that matter. Mm. And when we speak about barrenness, uh, as we look about the barrenness of Sarah, mm. we are not only uh, biased on that. Mm. We are looking at, we face a lot of barrenness in, in life. It yeah. could be barrenness of or in a situation in your marriage. It could be barrenness uh, with uh, business. business. It mm. could be barrenness with a uh, job, you know, at your workplace. Uh, things are not working. You're, you're not, you're, you're not, it's not being productive. It's not being fruitful. Uh, we, we face barrenness and, you know, stagnation or things that do not seem to move the way they're supposed to move in the different spaces of our life. And sometimes when we are, we, we, we are in that space and you're asking yourself a, a lot of questions, why has God taken too long? And we, we, we sometimes head on to seek the advice of others. And it is, we are not saying that it is wrong to seek advice of others. But as Pastor Miriam has said, surround yourself with people who are anchored into the word of God and who understand when God speaks upon your life, what that means for God and what that means for you and the process that it may take for you to get to that promised land as God has promised. And therefore, you anchor yourself or you, you, you associate yourself with people who are anchored into the word, people that will help you feed on that faith and on that word of God in trusting that the ways of God are way better and way higher than our ways. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, I was just thinking, sometimes we, when we seek, we seek advice from others, 
the advice that we get is how to help God. They give you man-minded solutions. Uh, for example, uh, I, I, I imagine uh, uh, a situation, um, for example, like in your marriage, uh, things are not working, uh, maybe you're having issues with in, infidelity or unfaithfulness, and it's one-sided, uh, and uh, most time today, somebody would tell you why stay there and and suffer you know uh, the option the option would be get out that would be the first option mm. today and sometimes maybe the best option for you would be to submit this issue in prayer maybe you have not done that uh, maybe it's somebody at work that has been a thorn on your flesh and this is somebody that has been trying to sabotage you. And uh, when you share this problem with maybe a friend, uh, the next advice would be, see you quit. Why, why do you have to submit yourself to such uh, uh, misery? Just like when Hagar flee because things did not sit well with the master. But God's will was different. Because he sent an angel and, and the angel told her, you go back and you do what? And you submit. submit. Mm. Therefore, I love the fact that you have shared that uh, you, the do's, uh, among the do's that you have shared is uh, understand the voice of God and believe that God is not a man that he should lie and that he shall follow on his word to perform it. Mm. You have talked about uh, surrounding yourself with the people that understand the word, the spoken word of God, and that will will draw you back to that word every other time for you to for you to feed on as you wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other the other the other don't you have said is uh, that you should detach yourself from seeking uh, solace or seeking seeking uh, advice from people who are not anchored into uh, into the word of God that may take you outside the way and the will of God. Mm, so maybe we can also get more of don'ts. Eh? Mm. Like you said about uh, people who seek the word of God. Mm. So I would say don't go back to Egypt. Wow. Don't go don't go back to Egypt. Mm. You've been to Egypt, Sarai, mm. and you saw what happened. Mm. They sold you, they gave you out to mm. the king mm. for their life to yeah. be to yes. be ransomed mm. or to for their redemption. Mm. And so this time now, Sarai is the one who is giving this advice to the mm. husband. Mm. Please take this Egyptian girl. Let her be the one to bear a child for us, a mm. Don't go back to Egypt. Now that's a don't. Do not go back to where they were killing you. They were, they were giving you out for them to leave. Mm. Yeah, you, 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 you mess yourself up again yes. badly. So there are times we've been in issues mm. and we sought a solution somewhere mm. which did not really work for us. Mm. Then unless you hear God, mm. how do you still go back to the same threads? Because an Egyptian is an Egyptian. And when the Bible talks of Egypt, it talks of the world. Mm. of the world. Yes, the children of God were fed there. Mm. Yeah, if, even Abraham went there, mm. came up with a lot of riches. Mm. And then we see this later on, I, the, his grandson, mm. Abraham's, Abraham's grandson, mm. I, this man called Jacob, mm. through the son Joseph, they went there and they were able to survive for many years. They were, they were uh, sustained. Mm. They were supposed to die, but they were sustained in Egypt. Mm. But now it's most of the, the end result, even of, of Jacob and his family, mm. was slavery, mm. which they had to get a redeemer mm. or a savior. Mm. Someone had to be born in very, very, very dire circumstances yes. to bring salvation. Mm. And you can see what happened. Mm. So Sarai 
found herself being despised. She was the mistress, but later on she's being despised. Yes. And like we said, we went somewhere and said, when Aga became expectant, mm. she must have felt all over, ballooned and like, oh, I am the boss around yes. here. What yes. can you tell me? Mm. You have struggled with this issue, but I'm able to walk over it. Mm. And so there are times we take ourselves without knowing or without getting into considerable decisions. Mm. We find ourselves having gone down Egypt way mm. and it messes us up badly it was messy for Sarai mm. and then when the boy is growing later on we shall see how the boy Ishmael would jeer mm. at, at Isaac the son of the promise mm. so we must try as much as possible mm. and this is possible through reminding ourselves what the word of God says about us mm. and also through prayer wow yes and if we have been elevated, we must not go down to seek solutions mm. where God did not put us, yes. unless we have had with clarity. Mm. And all systems are set mm. for us to come from our positions mm. of authority mm. and go down. Wow. That is what we are seeing in this scenario, mm. where Sarai comes and says, take my servant. Mm. Take my servant. Mm. Well, if she was going to promote her for something else mm. other than selling her position. Mm. And I'm almost reminded to, to think about uh, Esau and uh, Jacob. Mm. How you see this guy, Esau, is selling his birthright mm. and then he's given a meal and he thinks that's good to go. Mm. There are small mistakes we do mm. with people around us and we mess the whole of our lives. Mm. Yeah, like you have employed somebody and sometimes you sympathize so much and you give them too much, mm. too much freedom. Yes. Then they will come and mess you one day. Mm. And so this is a lesson for every woman. Please play in your league. Do not bring in everybody else now that you think you're not strong enough. Mm. Even when you feel like you're not strong enough, why don't you just take a break? Yeah. Like, that's why football is played in 90, 90 minutes. minutes. But within the 90 minutes, we have a break. Is it 15 minutes? Mm, yeah, 15 minutes. yeah, like a refresher yeah. moment. Yes. So if you, have a, if you get overwhelmed with the situation, mm. take a refresher moment. Mm. Go out a little, retreat. Yes. Go and ask yourself, mm. are you still very strong to go this way? Mm. Instead of jumping into something. Yes. And you know, so many of us never take breaks. It's true. Recently, I, I read a scripture that Jesus took his disciples away mm. with him. Mm. And they went and he told them, you've been working too long. You've not had a meal. You've not had a break. Let's go and take rest. Yes. And it is important to, if you are overwhelmed in life and situations allow, mm. take a leave. Mm. Please take a leave. Mm. Go out there and say, I need leave now. Mm. And then when you come back, you're refreshed. Instead of seeing your problem being a mountain, and then you bring in everybody who didn't have to be party to that. Mm. So it is important. That one was like, it should have come under don'ts. And so what we want to say is, don't work all the way without taking breaks. Mm -hmm. Evaluate your situation. Please don't work without evaluation. Mm -hmm. Don't work without taking a break. Mm -hmm. Don't allow life issues to kill you. Mm -hmm. When you, you, you can, if you, if you are in a depressed situation, mm -hmm. get out of that situation for a moment. Mm -hmm. Go out there behind the curtains. Mm -hmm. If there is any crying to do, cry there. Mm -hmm. And ask some people, People to be with you as you cry, like we said, the, 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 those accountability mm -hmm. partners mm -hmm. and managers. Mm -hmm. Like all of us should not walk this path of life alone. alone. I've always told you I have an accountability manager and at one point when I feel mm -hmm. like I'm overwhelmed, I say, Miriam, don't go beyond here. Mm -hmm. And I take one or two days and I go out. And I tell everybody in the house, men, I am not going to do anything. Mm. I have to take my leave. Mm. So don't get overwhelmed alone. Don't mm. die alone. Mm. Get out there. Go to a retreat place. Mm. And go to Mombasa if you have the funds. Mm. Walk around 
along the 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 streets, the, the streets of mm -hmm. be in the beach mm -hmm. uh, you can or you can go to some place mm -hmm. and just get refreshed mm -hmm. as you say lord I do not hear you well. Mm. Did you say mm. or didn't you say? Mm. Then when you're yourself, mm. you have you been have out of the normals. Mm. And some of us feel like it is time we went off that <laughs> place and had that retreat <laughs> before the year ends. Yeah, sure, so sure. Sure. before you're overwhelmed by everybody around you, mm. they are just talking about you. Mm. Don't allow that to get there. Mm. Run away mm. to as an escapee. Mm. Then when you're done with your crying, mm. come back. Mm -hmm. Some of them will have moved to another region mm. to do business. Yes. They will stop and they will be like, oh, we've not seen her for three days. Yeah. And before you know it, God will have done what he promised to Amen. do. Yes. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Before we sign out, I just want to leave you with um, the Word of God because the Word of God is the one that encourages us. It's the one that gives us strength to to just move on and just to 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 to, to wait on Him because there are benefits of waiting on the Lord because as you wait, uh, God trains you to have patience. You know. In the way it, you, you, you learn to be patient, in the way it, you learn to rely on God's strength and, and uh, you rely on God for, in totality for everything, in the way it, uh, God provides you with direction and with the vision. So if you will find yourself currently in that space of waiting on God on different issues of life, then you are in very good company because we are going to journey together as we wait on the Lord. And the word of the Lord that I'm reminded of is in Lamentation chapter 3 uh, from verse 25 to 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, yeah. to the soul who seek him. Mm. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. May God encourage you. May God strengthen you. May God equip you with the right tools and the right people around you so that you can focus and only focus on him as you wait on him. Because surely, indeed, he shall come through for you. You are loved, child of God. Till next time, stay blessed and still wait upon the Lord. Amen. Bye-bye.